Okay, so uh, yeah, we're going to be looking at this SX38. I mean, I've looked at this at previous exhibitions. I looked at it at EMO and I looked at it also at the Star Open House last year. Um, I've got a few words about it. It's a pretty colossal machine. It's certainly a powerhouse, very, very flat, flexible and very adaptable. And I'm going to introduce Matt Pearson, who's one of the um, area sales managers, and he's going to talk us through some of the... In fact, I'm going to, I'm going to challenge him and ask him some questions uh, about the actual machine. So if you'd like to come this way, Matt, Hi, Paul. So, hi, good, uh, good afternoon it is now. Yeah. Uh, sorry we're a little bit late <laughs> on the live feed. Uh, we also want, if you've got some questions, can you keep them coming in because we're going to be uh, going to Chaz and Geo shortly uh, and they'll be able to answer those for you. But in the meantime, Matt, um, you cover a territory for Star GB. This must be quite a machine to have in your armoury, isn't it? Oh, definitely. We've been waiting for this machine for a long time. It kind of fills the gap within our portfolio and opens it up to other customers as well. It's, it's an exciting time to get this on our product range. And, and let's talk about some of the exciting aspects, a, a few of which I'll pick out. The, the first is the fact that both spindles are, are as capable as each other, aren't they? Which is sometimes when you look at this sort of technology, you don't get that. What advantage does that give? Well, the advantage it gives, it, you, you can do so much more work on the subspindle as well because you've got the power capabilities on the subspindle, so you don't have to look at the process you're doing and do all the heavy work on the main. You can share that work between the two spindles and therefore it's more efficient. Okay, now when we look at this machine as well, we talk about sliding head technology, and some people might not associate a, a, a turret with a sliding head machine. Um, this has got the capabilities of having a turret and plat and tooling. What, again, what's the advantage of that? Uh, the advantage is of having both. You've got the, the, the tooling, so you can have as many tools as you want. I think we can go up to 84 tools, really, on the, with the, everything in there, with the different variations. But the advantages are, you can do uh, balance turning, balance milling as well, and you can still have the speeds because the index time between your gantry mm -hmm. is a lot quicker. You can index that tool to the, the opponent a lot, lot quicker. I know we just, I think we've had a question in about um, how current does a machine have to be to be able to fit HFT to it, Matt? We're going off tangent a bit, but it might be just be worth answering. Uh, that one, it depends what the machine is, but we can go quite far back. We've got the technology to, you might have to have an update for the FANUC software, mm -hmm. But again, if you send us an email onto the sales, we can have a look at the, which machine it is, but we should be able to go quite far back. OK, keep those questions coming in. We've got Geo uh, and Chaz coming up shortly, uh, talking more in, in detail about some of those questions. OK, let's get back to the machine. I want to talk about the, 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 we've mentioned the power in the spindles and also having the turret with plenty of power on means that you can tackle um, very challenging materials on this machine. Because again, in times gone by, people might look at these machines and might think, they're just for brass, which we've got here, but yeah, that's just yeah. for demonstration purposes. How incorrect is that? Uh, very incorrect. You can tackle any type of material realistically, especially on this machine because of the rigidity of the machine itself, from the ground up, from the casting, to how they've actually designed the whole machine inside the machine as well, with the new turret in there as well, between the, the dovetail and the linear. It gives it more rigidity on the actual B-axis as well. We've uh, redesigned that so it's supported top and bottom. So you can take them big heavy cuts. So you can use the power in that machine as well because we've built in that rigidity to that machine. But have you made the machine way more as well? You know, is there, a, is there a lot more in the base and the foundation of it? Is it laid out slightly differently in order to cope with some of those challenges you're talking about? Uh, correct, yes. Yeah. So we, we've, uh, the machine's been slightly been designed differently because you've got the slanted back as well. Uh, so uh, swarf removal to make it a little bit more compact but also with the casting it has put a little bit of weight on uh, you could say it's put a bit of covid weight on <laughs> <laughs> really right okay. me, and, me and you yeah oh, wait, you, talk, you speak for yourself mate um yeah don't forget coming up we're also going to announce the uh, winner of the cycle time challenge which we've been talking to you about over the past uh, week or so which is actually the part that we would have had over the screen at some point earlier today and we're obviously still encouraging you to ask more questions about this technology where would it fit in your machine shop have you got an application that you think you could do better because the next thing i'm going to ask you matt is about the prismatic side i know steve mentioned it but a lot of the companies we go and visit that, that you sell machines to now have, have transitioned from making parts on a vmc across to using capable technology like this these are very capable billing machines as well aren't they yeah oh definitely and this way it, it comes into its own as well because we're going back to what you said with the the turret and the the gantry as well the platen as well so you can hold the component and mill at the same time do the balance milling as well you've got all the driven tools in there and the power to drive them tools as well to make the components really as complex as possible it's just the size to fit in the machine itself and that has expanded as well because we're talking about uh, an sx38 here which you can go up to 42 mil 
bar capacity. Now that's in a, a non-guide bush mode, isn't it? That's correct, yeah. So it's a true 40, uh, 38 mil machine, but with an oversized uh, working, you can go up to 42 as well. And how quick would it take you to go from one to the other? Because this is always a question that people ask, going from that, that yeah, the, the guide bush to the non. Uh, it's set up time and we help the customers do that. So it's quite quick. So you could whittle it down with a bit more training. You could probably do it within 30 minutes or something like that, so really? 30, 40 minutes. And again, it just depends on who's doing it and we give that training to speed that process up. Yeah, a um, few more points that we need to cover on this. And again, we're still encouraging you to, to ask your questions. Geo's coming up very very shortly with Chaz where he'll be talking through uh, some of the, again, more technical stuff, but also answering uh, some of your questions. B-axis, how important is a B-axis on a machine like this, Matt? Seeing these in action really does, it does open up um, opportunities. And again, it? it goes back to what you said about the prismatic parts this opens it up massively from what you can actually do because this b-axis you can use on the the main spindle and the sub spindle as well it's supported top and bottom so it gives it that rigidity as well with the, with the b-axis and it's programmable as well and what about using it on the front and the back spindle is there any restrictions there no you can you, you, again crossover work you can do that at the same time because on the the b-axis you've got four power tools on the front and the back so you can do crossover work at the same time so that would bring me on to a point of then thinking about how you plan out the programming of a component. Now we're talking about a machine here which we've already said has equal power on front and back spindle. You've got That's your correct. turret and you've got your platens. How do you begin to think about which operations you do on which side? Because balancing the, the machining is important, isn't it? Oh, definitely. You take it right back to basics and you want to do as, as minimal processes as possible to speed it up so you get everything done as cross-lapping basically so that cycle time just keeps reducing and we work with a lot of customers to actually to do that so you look at the component you sometimes we flip it around to conventionally how they machine it so it's machining backwards to speed that process up yeah but again so it just depends what they're actually it machining. depends what they're doing okay so keep your questions coming in as i say we've got Chaz and, and geo coming up very shortly what do you think of this machine could could this machine fit uh, in your machine shop um matt production times are are critical and I know that some of the software that you incorporate in the machine enables you to, to uh, process parts faster, doesn't it? Can you tell us maybe about how you can optimise the, uh, the cycle time of machining with this machine? That's a very good question. Well, I think Chaz will be able to answer it in more in depth with that. But we look at the, the, the coding, so we use MC Assist and the super component within the machine as well. But I think that would be a good question for Chaz to go in more depth with. OK. Because we'll, he can we'll, give we'll, a, a, a wider explanation. OK, now I have heard that is a question that has actually come in, so I'm sure uh, I'm sure Gio and Chaz will pick that up in a minute. And don't forget, we've also got the winner of the cycle time challenge on that brass component that was made on this machine. Um, the part that we're actually talking about in question, could you have programmed that? Let's pick this up. She's behind you. Could I Do have wanna, programmed yeah, it? Could you have programmed that? And maybe do you just want to talk us through some of the features here? Uh, on the features itself, when you look at it, it just looks quite a simplistic component, but when you actually delve deep into it, you've got a lot of different actual uh, apertures in there. So we would machine it that way around. So in there, you can actually see you've got the kind of the gear cutting as well. Okay, uh, so we're gear cutting the splining as well. And then you've used the B axis. If you could just hold it still a little bit, Matt, it's cause, so we can Wish make sure that's, that's fine. Yeah, carry on. There. And also you've got the, the using the B axis well to, as well to machine the actual uh, functions on there but if you can see because my eyesight's not brewing oh there we go on the back so we machine all this on the front spindle okay and when we look at the back because you were talking about the b-axis you've got angles uh, holes in there as well because we've used the the, the b-axis to machine those so you where is this part derived from is this something that you've just put together in order to illustrate what the machine's capable of yeah it's one of those parts that you try and use as much functionality on the machine as possible so really it's a, it's a fancy paperweight but when you look at it and you could keep looking at it for five ten minutes you'll see another feature and another feature and another feature so it's a very interesting component to look at well i think what we what we need to be uh, talking about here is this is the part that we've we've been asking you to predict and get or guess the cycle time of the complete manufacturer of this there's still time to guess we'll be we'll be uh, announcing the winner at the end of the show and i know we've already had over about 250 guesses oh, wow. so keep them coming in we're obviously live at the moment we've got geo and Chaz coming up shortly going to talk more technically about the machine once again um, this to me when i look at this sort of part I think if I wasn't doing it on a machine like this, I would have to have maybe two, three machines in the machine shop. So this really is where the, this machine comes into its own. 
Oh, massively. We're, to, we're talking to more people now that have got a, like an older type machine shop. They've got v, uh, VMCs, lathes, and they have to, as you say, four or five different operations to make a component. Mm -hmm. And they want to make it actually more uh, efficient within their factory. And now, now you, the machines have transitioned towards being able to do this type of part, but what about the old historic components you used to do on sliding head, these longer parts, these thin parts? Are we still capable of doing that? Oh, we still get those through. And we still get customers coming, can you do, how long can you do a part? And said, so, oh, as long as you want, really, because it can be injected through the subspindle, but we've got to handle it as well. So we still get the components, as you say, as a generic slider would do. Uh, the, the high volumes, but we also get these kind of interesting ones as well that the apps guys love. Okay, now um, automation is a big topic, and again, I'm sure in a minute when uh, when we've got Geo coming up, talking to Chaz, they may may touch on this. Keep your questions coming in. It's a fascinating uh, machine. This is Matt. Let's talk about part ejection here because the security or, or making sure you don't damage parts. You need to make it's great being making shiny components, great surface yeah. finishes which you can achieve on this. But then when you drop them out of the parts catcher, you, you, need you damage to. them. Definitely. So when you look at the machine itself, you've got the part catcher here, so it will be, be engaged to the subspindle and catch it, and it's an actual soft landing. In here, you can't really see. It's a, a very soft belt conveyor, so when they land, you're not actually going to damage it. Yeah, I mean, that is very, 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 very important. Um, also, uh, automation, I know I said, uh, and as I said earlier, we're going to be talking with uh, Gio and Chaz in a minute. Automation on these machines, we've, we've seen some of them integrated with solutions to pick up parts and place parts. People talk about automation, but this is automation in itself, isn't it? Yeah, in one machine. <laughs> and that unmanned run, is there anything you have to concern yourself with about thermal growth, um, sister tooling, things that can make sure you keep the machine running? Oh, we, again, we work with the customers depending how long the actual uh, production run is going to be. So if you want a very long production run overnight, we could look at the sh machine, put sister tooling in as well, put coding in there to change that to the sister tooling. We have even customers as well that have uh, two programs for the, a day program and a night program. So the day program is foot to the floor, get out as many as possible. Evening program, slow it down a little bit so you know you're going to get the tool life. That's a bit like you driving to either go and get an order, isn't it, or not? Oh, very true, and Steve's probably somewhere laughing as well. <laughs> uh, on that point, keep your guesses coming in for the cycle time challenge for this part. Matt, if you just want to hold that up again, uh, this is the part that the machine has been making. Uh, it's been making it in one hit, and we want to know uh, how fast this is, and you could stand a chance of winning one of one of three prizes, in fact, which we will announce at the end of the show, and they are fantastic prizes, all to do with sport. Uh, and I know Matt's uh, very athletic, like myself. And on that <laughs> note, I'll hand over to another athlete uh, where Gio is going to be talking to uh, Chaz. Uh, Gio, take it, take it away.